and welcome back to the same background that you see on the true crime channel but just from like a slightly different angle i actually don't like how much he's staring into the camera today i'm gonna do my makeup but like actually properly <laughs> but like actually properly i'm actually gonna properly show you how i do my everyday makeup because i'm going to see one of my friends in concert tonight james marriott is like coming to the end of his uk tour is it a uk tour i'm gonna go see him tonight in london and i'm really excited um so i'm gonna do my makeup and then to be fair when i finish doing my makeup i might take you along to the concert with me oh go on then why not anyway let's get started with my makeup Okay, the first thing I do is my face. I used to start with my eyebrows. And honestly, when my eyebrows are like on their last few weeks, cause I get them laminated. So I get them tinted and like permed upwards. Cause otherwise I have like the world's most palest, gingery, blondy, like floppy nothingness eyebrows ever. So I get them laminated. Um, right now they're about three weeks in. So I'd say they're like fine. Like these are pretty full. Um, but when I'm about six, five, six weeks in, when I'm about to get them redone, I usually do my eyebrows first because I would put a lot more eyebrow product on. But right now, we don't need to do that. So I'm gonna start with primer. I start with my face. I start with, how do they? The Milk Hydra Grip Primer. This is really good because I have really dry skin. And also, this goes really sticky on your face. I don't know if that actually does anything, but subconsciously it makes me feel like it's doing something because it makes me feel like well yeah obviously the foundation is gonna stick better to my face if my face is sticky i don't know if that's really the science behind makeup though i know i need to go more like light-handed on my face i desperately need to go more light-handed on my face because i was watching back one of the makeup videos that i did like watching back the edit of it and i was like slapping my face i go so red so the it cosmetics your skin but better cc cream i'm in the paleest of pale shades because Ginger. And this is SPF 50. This is a CC cream, so it's like really light coverage. Eh, it's like light medium. But yeah, I just slay this all over my face with a booty blender. This is like a really fresh one, but usually they look freaking gross in this house. This is my contour and blush one. I have like three different ones on the go at the same time because I can't trust myself to wash them properly. And I don't want to like mix the colors, you know? The concealer I use is the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer. Again, in the palest shade because God made me paper colored. And even then, this isn't that bright. It's not that light. Like, I think I just about get away with it. It is a really good concealer. I especially like this one because I've got pretty dry skin and sometimes concealers can like really emphasize your dryness if you're not careful. And this one never really has. So like, what more can you ask? It's got coverage and it don't make me look like a clown like a scaly little lizard. I put it kind of wherever I feel like I need it the most, which is usually my under eye bags. And then this bit and this bit seem to get really red on me. I don't know why, I don't know if it's because they like stick out. I've got a really big forehead and a really protruding chin. So maybe they just get like cold easier than the rest of my body. But like, yeah, sometimes they need a little bit of help. Oh, but now I feel a bit cakey. Yeah! Okay, so next we have the very extensive contour, bronzer, blush and highlight routine. And this is a very layered process that I don't expect you to follow along with because this is excessive. But I'm gonna show you it anyway. And please don't judge me. I don't know, I really enjoy this part of my makeup routine for some reason, but whatever. So we start out with liquids and then we go on to powders. So, starting out with the Charlotte Tilbury contour wand thingy that Madison Beer uses and now every fucker else uses because it is actually like really, really good. I love Charlotte Tilbury makeup. Seriously, one of my favorite makeup brands. Uh, but yeah, we do, we do like quite a lot on the forehead because like I said, I have a really large forehead. I, d I do kind of like her. Like she is, you know, stuck to my head forever. Not a bad thing, just a thing. So I have to do quite a bit of contour on these top corner parts anyway because um sometimes i feel like a receding man i bring it in like quite a lot i think that's the best way to blend it is to bring it in like quite far i don't know can you tell like a difference say yes and then i put a little bit at the top so i just give myself a big crown just a big brown crown I try to go like kind of high up with my cheek contour, but then I always end up looking at it and being like, that's not high at all. 
and this is a daily occurrence. So you would think the next day I would be like, okay, let's do it better today, but no, she does it wrong every time. So let's try and give this a go together. So I do my contour, like visibly higher than the actual contour of my cheek, which I would say is about there. I don't know why, I think I seen that on TikTok one time. I don't know. And then blend. But don't blend too far down, Ellie. That's where I always go wrong. I blend too far down and then I'm like, what was the point in doing this? Because you blended it down anyway. Oh, okay. You know what? I think I've finally done this high enough. Is she slaying or is she slaying? I hope I look like I'm slaying on camera because truthfully, the mirror is telling me I'm slaying. Okay, contouring my nose. Actually, my jawline first. Usually I just take like whatever what, whatever's left on the sponge after I've done all that and I just like do the sides of my jaw and my chin a little bit. And then it makes it blend in with the rest of your face a bit better because you're all like angular up here and then you just need to carry on the pattern in a nose time. Adam's making a ruckus in there. <laughs> nose contour. I use a little brush like this. You know these little angly brushes? Hello. Little angly brush like this and I go and then I draw shapes on my nose until it looks good. There is no rhyme or reason. I just be trying to make a bit more definition there. I do my two side lines like that and actually I want to bring in the tip of my nose a bit more so I'm gonna bring it like up here. I want to give myself like a little kind of nose, you know? You know, the medical term for that shape nose. And then I like go over this little bit. What's that part of your nose called? Between the bridge and the... You can see. You can see what I've just done. You can actually see it. Stop getting me to explain things that you don't need me to explain. And then sometimes I bring it down here ever so slightly. Like, so it continues like that, like a little curve around your nose. I try to blend that in as much as I can though. But I, again, the same reason I do my jawline, it just kind of like helps to blend it in. You can't like really define one bit and then leave one bit completely undefined, otherwise you look kind of crazy. Which is again another reason to like bring it under your nose like this. Even if you don't want to like change the shape of your nose necessarily, it does just kind of need to <laughs> blend seamlessly. So now my nose looks crazy. I'm gonna get one of my other beauty blenders. Where is it? This is one that I use to put foundation or concealer on to blend contour out. Like I couldn't use this one that I used like under my eyes to do this job, otherwise under my eyes would end up like brown. This is why I have like seven different sponges and they're all so dirty. They all need cleaning really but Actually not this one, this one's actually really fresh. As you can tell, it's hardly used. I kind of start by lightening the edges of my nose with the bulk of the concealer that I just put on the sponge. Oh yeah, I just put a little bit of concealer on the sponge. Forgot to tell you that. I start off at the sides, brightening them up with like the bulk of the product. And then I start to blend over the contour lines I made. And then there's my nose. Okay, next, blush. This is my favorite part of my makeup routine. Apart from eyebrow gel. I really enjoy doing eyebrow gel for some reason. But this is my favorite part and this is one of my favorite products ever, ever, ever of all time. This is Benetint by Benefit. Well, I use a combination because on its own, this is a little bit too cool toned. Well, no, it's actually kind of perfect, but with the amount of blush that I use, I would use like a bit of excessive blush. Um, if I use too much of this, then it is a bit too gray on my cheeks. So then I mix in like a warmer color. This is the Glossier Cloud Paint in Beam. And it's like a, a slightly more orangey pink. It's still quite pink. It's still rather cool toned, but just, helps to alleviate some of the greyness that happens when you use a bit too much of this. I put this mostly on like my, kind of like where you put highlighter. I put it like up on my cheekbones cause I don't know, I just think it makes your face look a little bit more angular. And honestly with this round head of mine, I will take anything to make it look a little bit more angular. To be fair, that actually looks quite cute. I wouldn't need to go on with another type of blush, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Who's gonna stop me? The blush police? It's like a little bit orangier, corallier, pinky, orange, coral pink, you know? I powder my face before I then go on to my powder products, my powder bronzer and my powder blush. Yes, there is more blush. A three-step blush routine. I don't know, I don't know. This is coming from a girl that never used to wear blush. I never owned a blush ever because I'm just naturally quite pink and I really was when I was overweight as well. I was always flushed. Um, so I never wanted to add more pink 
to my face. So I never used to wear blush, but now I'm a reformed blush wearer and I'm obsessed with it. So for powder, I use the Coty Airspun powder. What a classic. If you were into makeup YouTube in its heyday, you've heard about this. But also I've heard that you can get clown lung from it if you use it too much, which I actually don't remember what clown lung is, but it doesn't sound good, does it? Hmm. Okay, powder done. Now we finish the face routine. Yeah, no wonder these clowns got clown long. It's fucking going everywhere, is that powder? Okay, the powder bronzer I use, Anastasia Beverly Hills in Tawny. Tawny. I get one of these just big few pangas brushes and just send it, you know, a bit. You know what? As much as I love that Charlotte Tilbury contour, it is a contour. And so it doesn't like, it just doesn't give me the oomph that I'm going for. And there is, there's a certain vibe that an orangey toned powder can bring to a face that Charlotte Tilbury contour one just can't. Which is why I feel like both are vital to my routine. Okay, blush. Lottie London brush, blush. <laughs> the powder blush that I use is the Lottie, L I broke it the other day, actually. The Lottie London blush in haze. And this is actually like, uh, look, it's like, uh, what's the word? Gradient, it goes from light to dark. And this is basically because when I put my powder over the top, it um, covers up a little bit of my blush to where it looks a little bit patchy afterwards. So I literally take the tiniest bit of this blush ever, because this is really pigmented as well. And I just kind of like even out my blush, you know? It's a bit like a blush topper. Just brings it, brings it back a little bit. Oh my fuck, I look really pink in the viewfinder. Oh no. Anyway, next. Eyebrows or freckles first? I'm gonna do eyebrows actually because I use a powder product for my eyebrows and a liquid one for my freckles. This isn't liquid, what's a pomade? Wax? Cream? But actually, first, look at my lips. I've got foundation lip disease right now. Ew, ugh. So I'm gonna get a little combud and a little bit of micellar water and uh, clean my lips. <laughs> I'm like a window cleaner, like a really tiny mini uh, windscreen wiper when I do this. But look, sometimes you don't realize how much foundation and powder and whatnot you like accidentally get on your lips. Until those days when you forget to wear a lip product out of the house and then you catch yourself in a mirror and you're like, why do I have white lips? Burt's Bees. This one's pumpkin spice flavored. Pump, oh. I'm hungry. I'm suddenly hungry. I was interrupted by my stomach rumbling and I know that my Wagamamas is in the house. Me and Adam ordered Wagamamas for lunch and he is currently eating his and I am starving. Okay, eyebrows. Like I said, I use a powder product um, and sometimes when it is towards like the end of my brow cycle, I'll use pomade in my eyebrows as well. But as a rule, I only use the Anastasia, 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 Anastasia Beverly Hills. Anastasia Beverly Hills uh, brow powder duo in Auburn. But as you can see, I only really use the ginger bit because I do not have brown eyebrows. And on the odd occasion that I have used the darker color, I've looked back at photos from that night and been like, who the fuck invited James, James Giles from 2018? Do you remember when he had those big eyebrows? I used the Anastasia 14 brush. Beep, beep, beep. Yeah, uh, this is the one that like everyone uses. <laughs> like everyone uses it. So it's like a little angled brush, which makes it really easy to make hair-like strokes. There's some like phrases and keywords from makeup YouTube that make me die every time I hear them. One of them is hair like strokes. Really makes me laugh. Um, so pigmented. Holy grail. Even just the phrase holy grail makes me think of some girl sitting in her beauty room telling me her top five favorite, you know, eyeshadows. What else was there? What other words like that was there? Oh, I miss makeup YouTube. I miss like 2014 YouTube. I mean, I'm really enjoying YouTube at the moment though. I, I, I'm really enjoying this current wave of like video essays and like educational content seems really, really popular on YouTube at the moment. And honestly, I've like, not been that much of a YouTube watcher for the past like year or so, just cause the whole like Mr. Beast content, unless it was from him himself. I really like Mr. Beast, but like that whole like genre of content of like shouting at the camera stresses me out. So I haven't been watching that much YouTube. That is until um, the video essay era. And I do really appreciate all my video essay babes. John and Teresa, I'm looking at you. 
I then use Glossier Boy Brow in brown because I don't actually think they have an Auburn one. Either that or they didn't have an Auburn one when I first started using it and then I just like the brown one now because it is quite dark. Like it's darker than the powder that I use on my eyebrows which I really like because it makes the hairs stand out separately from the base of the like powder colour. You know what I mean? It still makes it look like my eyebrows are very hairy. Okay. Freckles. Actually, I'm gonna go have my dinner and then I'll come back and I'll do the rest of it. I mean, for you, it's gonna be like two seconds. Are you ready? One, two, three. <laughs> See, it's already the time. I'm, I'm a bit full. But I took my jumper off and I realized I'm wearing my Brighton Electric shirt, which is actually the venue that I first ever saw James perform at, which is cute considering the day. Oh, it's actually the first venue I ever saw Lovejoy perform at as well. But that was before they were even performing as Lovejoy. That was back when they would like make up like fake names for themselves. I saw them when they were Ouija Board Madness. It was a Ouija Board Madness gig. The highlighter that I use, this is MAC Soft and Gentle. Skin finish, or whatever the fuck it's called. Mineralized skin finish. This is a classic from makeup YouTube. Hello! Cool, freckle time. This is, again, one of my favorite parts of my makeup routine. So you just get a play. So, freckles. I use uh, the dip brow, Anastasia dip brow, again in Auburn, so it matches my eyebrows. I feel like that's a really good hack. Like, make sure that your eyebrow product and your freckle product I kind of like the exact same shade because I don't know, props makes it look more natural or something. I'm not a scientist, but I guess that's like what brains would, would like perceive to be natural. Anyway, so I use the same brush that I use on my eyebrows um, and I get it on the little, on the pointiest end. Hello. I get it on the pointiest little end bit there. And then I just send it. I tend to go over like my natural freckles as much as I can and then I just start drawing some on wherever I feel like they would look. Slay boots and house. I focus mainly on my nose and like mainly around here and then getting less and less as it gets to here and then like a few here. I don't know why I like to have like more and I like to take them up here as well. I think it helps to like go like that with your face. I don't know. Again, I'm not a scientist, so. I also make sure to do them like different darknesses. So like some freckles, I'll like go over a few times so they look like bigger and darker than others and again that just adds a bit more like natural depth to them. Oh, while I was eating my dinner me and Adam watched a video called Amazing Horse and some of you might have seen this but I'd never seen this, it's like nine years old. Jake, go watch it as you're editing this video and put in your reaction. Look at my horse, my horse is amazing. Oh I've seen them. Okay cool. That's about it for my freckles. And then sometimes I will go back over the top with my little powder puff thing, especially on these bits of my nose here, because naturally I want them to be a bit more highlighted anyway. So I want to like mute out the freckles ever so slightly. Cool, so that's my frecks. On to my eyes. The palette that I'm about to introduce you to is literally my baby. She is my best friend in the whole entire world. The Natasha Denona glam palette and this is freaking expensive i've wanted a natasha denona palette for years and years and years and years and years and years and years i remember i used to watch kathleen lights talking about them when i was like a little teenager and these palettes are so freaking expensive that i used to look at them online and be like it's so pretty but like never in a million years will i own that and then I bought myself one for Christmas last year and I have been obsessed with this ever since. It's literally just a very boring basic, not boring, it's beautiful. It is truly beautiful, but neutral. So I use like a gray, so this is just on the day to day. I don't do much eyeshadow at all, just a bit of like definition work. I use like a gray brown um just in my crease and that's literally about it i tried to take it up a bit because i have naturally very hooded eyes so i tried to take it up onto my brow bone a bit just to open my eye up a bit and then i like wing it out at the side because i do winged eyeliner every day and it just like <laughs> do it flows nicer i guess I'm really excited to see the James show tonight. Like throughout the day I've been remembering that I'm going there and I'm like, oh yay, nice. I love seeing James live. I've seen him live so many times now and Car Lights, like Car Lights is one of my favorite songs, period. But it's my favorite James Marriott song and there is just something so different about that song live. I'm very excited. I'll do my like brown creasy color like that and then I then use a brush that looks like this and it has a little bit of powder on the end and I like carve a scoop out of my eye. Now seriously, this probably does nothing, but to me, it does 
millions because I feel like it like helps to give you like a very very subtle cut crease kind of effect I think it makes my eye look so much bigger okay eyeliner time this is the most stressful part of the tutorial so stick with me we're gonna be brave we're gonna do this together so the eyeliner that I use and have used for years and years and years is the NYX Epic Ink Liner. I used to use the black one for like years when I was a teenager and recently over the last year I've swapped to the brown one just because again for the same reason that I use the same color for my freckles and my eyebrows I think the brown like the warmness of a brown versus a black goes really well with my hair and my eyebrows and my freckles and fucking everything else I just think it suits me more to go for brown and it's not like a light brown it's like a black brown I'm gonna try my best to do this on camera and talk you through it I haven't ever done this before maybe I did it one time years ago because I'm really bad at like talking my way through things okay so we start I do a line on my upper lash line as close to my lashes as I can possibly get it. Okay, so now I've got the top part of my liner practically on because I don't do very thick liner at all because I do have hooded eyes and so I try to keep it as thin and like as outward as I possibly can because thick eyeliner just looks very heavy on hooded eyes I find personally. We're gonna try and go for quite a thin, quite an outward wing. So I do the bottom line first and then I join it on over the top. I think we could have got it like first time mm ish. It's not as curved as I would want it. So I'm gonna go in and curve it a bit more. So yeah, once you've made the two lines and coloured it in, there you go, wing on face. Sorted, do, do another one and then you, you're good. <laughs> okay, so now I look at my eyeliner and I realise how uneven it is. But don't worry, we do this every single day, girls. <laughs> I do not remember a single time that I have got both of my wings of my eyeliner right the first time. My cellar water on a little cotton pad. Yes. And then I get this brush, which is like a really thin flat one. And I use kind of the end of it and I swill it in the micellar water. So it's just like damp with micellar. And then I use that as an eraser, right? And this is the best way I've ever found to take off eyeliner while still keeping everything neat, not taking off too much of your foundation. Like this, this is perfect. This is a perfect method. So for example, I think both of the points are too thick. I want my eyeliner to be a bit sharper. So I've got some micellar water on this. Literally just whips it into shape. I mean, I hope you could tell that from the video, but like, trust me, if not. Essentially, my eyeliner philosophy is draw it on, and that is your first draft, and then neaten it up and finalize it with micellar water. And it's never done me wrong. It's never done, it's never done me dirty. The mascara I use, I've told you guys about this before and I will tell you about it until the day I die because this is the best mascara I have ever found. This is the Hourglass Caution Extreme Lash Mascara available today from Hourglass, I guess. The reason I think that this is the best mascara ever in the world ever to exist is because I have really like, I don't know what the word is, but basically my, this bit really far out, AKA eyelashes always imprint on under eye. What does that mean about my eye? Does that mean I have like big eyes, small eyes? I don't know, basically I have them kind of eyes that just imprint your mascara all the time. And this is the one mascara in the world, apart from, Max Factor 2000 calorie waterproof one, but that doesn't do shit for your lashes. Like it literally just makes them black. It don't give them length or volume or anything. This gives them both and it don't imprint under my eyes that much. I mean, it does imprint the tiniest bit, but like the least that I've ever found. And then finishing everything off with Urban Decay All Night Settings. Hair back everybody, get ready. Okay, Slayer. Oh, lips. <laughs> I was gonna start saying bye. The lip that I always wear is the Charlotte Tilbury Lip Cheat in Pillow Talk. This is like the perfect pink nude for my skin tone. I mainly do like the outside of my lips and then I drag it in a little bit. I try not to do too much on the inside of my lips because I know I get really, really dry lips and it starts to look flaky and crusty and gross and dry. So yeah, finished look. <laughs> Makeup is done, let's go find an outfit. I'm thinking, actually, I'm not gonna change my outfit much from this because do you wanna see what I'm wearing? So this is the current outfit. I'm sorry you're all the way down there, but I'm wearing flares, right? I got flares the other day. 
I know I don't need to shout because you've got a microphone on your butt. These are really fucking comfy. So comfy, so slay. And honestly, I kind of think I slay in them. So yeah, I might wear my flares. And it's a concert, so that means I can jump up and down without exposing my, my behind. I don't know what top to wear. Hmm, do I just wear this one? I can't just wear the outfit I've been wearing all day. Actually, yeah, this feels like a lot more of a going outside outfit. Literally just changed graphic tees. Cool. Let's go see Joe's man! You can back up a little bit. Tonight, I wish I was your boy. Ooh, you're really pulling on my cranium, there, girl. Is um, it done? Look at that. I mean, yeah. That's yeah. in. That's the first time I've ever done that in my life.